All right, so uh, I put the cylinder head on and the head gasket, and then I put the rockers, the lifters, and then the little shim things. Uh, I believe I need to uh, get new shims because some of them didn't spec out, is what my machine shop said, but I'm gonna recheck the valve lash and all that stuff and see where they're at and see what size shims I need. But anyways, in the manual, it says to apply gasket maker to the uh, head gasket, and you do that on the ends of them. So on the ends, you do it on both sides too. So you can see there's a little bit of squish right there and right there. And I believe you do that so that way your uh, timing chain cover uh, will um, go here against the surface. I don't know if you peel it off or scrape it, scrape the excess. I honestly have no idea, but I think that looks good right there. And uh, we tightened it down. So we use the ARP head studs, the ones for the Subaru. Oh, my shoe fell off. That's crazy. But we use the ARP head studs. And uh, on here, it's very confusing because it says to do the, the studs hand tight, but they kind of didn't really want to go that tight. So I just did them until they basically bottomed out and then I didn't force them any further than that. And then the nuts and washers and stuff on top. I used the chaser uh, stuff too, or the, the fastener assembly lube and all that stuff as well. But then uh, we did the pattern of this. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you do uh, three sets of torques. So you do 30, 60, and then 95. And then uh, you just do it in that order each time. So it's pretty easy. And then uh, after you get the rockers, lifters, and shims in, um, you should check them after. But you're going to be putting uh, the cam carrier and the camshafts and all that stuff in. So mine are already assembled because I never took them apart. But you want to still check over in your manual to make sure you're doing everything that you're supposed to. So this is where I'm at right now. So this is where it talks about the... Um, the cam or the lifters, rockers, and the shims, the shims, and all that. And then the next step is to put these O rings in, which I did right here. I believe these are the right O rings, the little small ones, because there's there's a bunch of O rings and they don't have any kind of indication of which is which. I know these orange ones go to the bed plate. Um, I don't know where the rest go, but I'm I'm just figuring out as I go. But um, as well. Uh, you're going to be putting sealant on the cam carrier and on, on the bottom of it. And you're also going to make sure that spacer thing is on it. So right here, this is that spacer thing. And it goes uh, right here, I believe, is where it ends up landing afterwards. So that has to be on there. I'm not really sure what its purpose is. And also, there's these tiny little filters. You have to make sure that these are on there because that'll... Um, uh, this has something to do with your um, variable valve timing. So there's a filter here, and then there's one here. It's a little tiny strainer filter thing. I just bought two new ones, so you just put them in. I guess they don't really press down. I don't know. Well, I hope they don't pop out when I flip it upside down. But yeah, so next I'm gonna do the sealant. I'm gonna wipe all this off with some brake clean and then put the sealant on it and then slap it on there and tighten it down. And hopefully these check out, but I'm not really expecting them to. So yeah, we'll see what happens. All right, so uh, there's been quite a lot of progress since the last video, but we did the timing. Timing is it, pretty easy on this. So the only thing you gotta be careful is that you're not uh, turning the camshafts and the crank in the wrong spots. Otherwise you might, uh, you might have to take your whole heads off and redo your valves. You know, it's no big deal. So anyways, you just follow the manual. So the manual will tell you in which direction you turn this, and it'll tell you how to turn this too. So all of your stuff should be in the zero lift position when you're doing it, otherwise you might've messed something up. And then I set my crankshaft to be in the 50-50 spot, so I don't remember which way the pin is facing. I think it's up, the little keyway thing down there. And it'll have you turn it downwards and have it face kind of like at an angle. There's a little, uh, there's a little star marker thing in there. So that's what you'll be basing it off of. Not this keyway thing, but there's a little moon shaped thing in there. It's hard to see, but it's on the yellow right now. And then um, you'll just follow what it says. So it tells you uh, turn the intake driver side a certain way. 
And then there's little arrows on here too. You'll line those up with what it says in the manual. They all have arrows and then it's pretty easy. And if you do it right, you won't even really have a chance at messing anything up. So this is where it tells you the keyway, a little plunger thing, and then the keyways degrees and how to turn it. So that's the little moon thing. And then that's the keyway itself. And then you could see right here that this is the driver's side. So bank two, and there's that little plate thing. And then if you just follow through here, so I didn't have the tool, so I just opened this enough and then stuck it in these holes here and it worked pretty good. And then, uh, yeah, just follow this. If it gets confusing, just keep rereading it. Make sure you're doing what you're supposed to. And uh, if you time one side, I mean, the side is already good. So you don't have to worry about smashing those valves or anything. And then you can time the other side. But I also did the oil pan and the bed plate and all that. So everything's all ready, all the sealants on all that stuff. So the next step is to seal the timing chain cover, which is, I mean, it's almost getting time to put this in the car. All right, so before you're gonna put your timing chain cover on, you wanna make sure you get all your O-rings and seals and stuff in. So if you look here at the IPB, <laughs> illustrated parts breakdown you can see it says there's three smaller rings and then there's the one big one this big one is uh don't forget that one because that's uh kind of something that i did once in the past so uh this is the oil pump o-ring so this goes to your pickup tube and your oil pan and then you have one up here you have one up here and then you have one up here so you should have a total of four o-rings three small ones three small ones and one big one and then uh, after that, you can start uh, just verifying everything else in the manual, make sure everything's good. These little holes look like they should have O-rings, but they don't. And then uh, all the other holes and stuff, uh, there should be sealant and stuff on the um, timing chain cover itself. There's little receptacles for those. So you can see they go here. So you'll just put sealant on these, uh, not that one, on the bolt hole ones. I think there's five and then around the whole cover as well. All right, so updates on the whole process. So we put the timing chain cover on, timed it, uh, put the harmonic balancer on, we got a new oil dipstick tube. Uh, we robbed all the sensors off of the old timing chain cover and replaced all, or put them all back on. Uh, this one got a little messed up, so uh, we're hoping that it works still. And that it's not just like broken, broken. I just realized this is so sideways. <laughs> uh, it's all right. It's like two o'clock in the morning. We've been uh, at it pretty much all day, like since we got off work. And yeah, um, put all the spaghetti all over it. The, the wiring harness is quite a pain to do. I'm going to be honest with you. So um, yeah, I'll show you what the wiring looks like. So this part's pretty easy because I mean, it routes this way and you can kind of figure out where each one goes. So you have those ones and then they go there. I don't even know if this is right as well, but we'll figure that out when we try and start it. Hopefully tomorrow is when we're going to get it in. These I'm pretty sure are for the port injectors. And then these gray ones down here, I believe are for the direct injectors. Um, it's hard to see. Yeah, there's a gray one down there. There we go. That one, and then there's this one as well. And then you have these two wires. These could be flipped, I'm not sure. We'll have to figure that out when we get there. Um, and then over here, uh, crank position sensor, and then the other knock sensor. And again, I don't know if this is the right wire for here, but I'm assuming that it is because these two wires are kind of like on the same branch off. They're a little, a little tight, like how they have them route, and it's a little sketchy. And I don't know if this is supposed to route underneath this hard line or above it, because it kind of feels like if it went underneath, it would actually be like a better routing path. But it's just kind of weird. Like, I don't know if this, I don't know if all of this goes underneath here, because I could route it underneath, but I don't know, we'll see. And then, um... The coil packs are pretty easy to figure out where they go as well. Same with on the other side. I mean, what I started with was, I started with the coil packs. Oh, that is super tight. I started with the coil packs and then I worked my way on familiarity. And then uh, the EVAP solenoid 
uh, wire, the um, injector, direct injector drive pump, whatever connector thing. And then it goes back around here. So it goes, it used to go over here. It used to go like this on the old, or, yeah, the way that I had it. But I don't know if it's supposed to go under this or over this. But based on old pictures and stuff that I had, it went over it, I believe. Well, actually, it might have it might have gone over here, and then it might have gone under here. So I'll have to look at some pictures to figure that out. And then um, we got the harmonic balancer put on, the water pump, um, and the water pump uh, pulley, and then all the other stuff underneath here. So the oil pan, the bed plate, uh, this coolant line, which that coolant line, I believe, goes to the throttle body because it connects, this is that coolant line and it goes all the way around here, right here. And then this connects to the car, which I believe is for your um, your heating in the car. And then this is the return line. One of these I think is return and one of these is feed because these both go to the car over here, like inside the actual car. So tomorrow what we have to do is we're gonna put the, um, the timing plate thing on, which there's that little nub there and it goes into the specific hole on here. So that nub goes on there and the teeth will be facing inwards. So that way the crank position sensor can read off of it. And then we're gonna be putting the flywheel on, um, the clutch and all that stuff. And then hopefully we'll be good to just put it in the car. So I didn't put the mounting bolts for the transmission in the bottom here because I'm gonna try and figure that out later. Because I think it's gonna be really, really difficult to get this in the car with these in there, these studs. Because I know how difficult it was getting it out with the studs. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna put it in the car and then see if I can uh, sandwich two bolts together and try and get them in the holes and then try and twist this. These don't get tightened to that much if you look at the manual. But I ran out of um, pages in my manual that I had. All the printouts, it only went so far. Like it, it didn't get to like the rest of it. So I don't know where to find the rest of the information besides just scouring the internet for specific torque values and all that. But next is gonna be putting it in the car and uh, you know, starting it's coming up pretty soon, hopefully. So something that is important to note is uh, when you're putting this plate on, so this goes on and then the flywheel goes on over this. And then after that goes your uh, pressure plate and uh, clutch disc assembly. So there's this little pinhole in here on the back of the crankshaft. And then there's a little pinhole receiver here. So you just gotta line that up, you know, put it right on there. And then uh, that's how you get your timing correct. <laughs> <laughs> at least systematically. And then uh, on the top here, there's these two wires and this is where they go. I was able to look at the manual or uh, illustrated parts breakdown of the wiring harness. And it's, I mean, it's not very clear because I was looking on the Subaru and Toyota website and it just shows like a basic outline of where each wire goes. But I believe every wire appears to be in the right spot. The only thing that I'm really curious about is there's this bolt hole that's on the top here. And I don't, from my memory, it didn't have anything in it and there's no scoring or clear, clean looking uh, stuff on top of it. So that kind of indicates to me that this is just an empty hole just for fun. I don't know what the purpose of it is. Probably some mounting or something. Probably some automatic transmission related thing. But yeah, it's uh, coming out pretty good. All right, so a pretty big update from the last video. Uh, last one I was talking about putting the flywheel back on. So uh, when you put the flywheel on, uh, what you did is what I did is I uh, used a wrench to hold the flywheel still. So I put a bolt in the back of the transmission and then I put a wrench on that bolt and then I put the open end on one of the pegs that's on the uh, flywheel and that way you could stop it from spinning. But then uh, we put the transmission or the engine back in, connected to transmission, everything. We did it without the studs in the bottom of the bed plate and it actually went together really, really easily. Like 
We literally just slapped it together and just started bolting it and it just went straight together. Almost like we didn't have a flywheel on it because it was like that good. But uh, after that, we just, you know, started bolting everything back up and we got the turbo manifold and all that stuff back in. And then I have these two radium catch cans. So the routing that we did is this one goes to the PCV in the back. And then this one goes to this uh, breather tube that's right underneath the AC compressor. And then these bottom two, since it's going to be turboed, they usually go to, uh, I think this one. And I don't know where the other one goes. I think they go some, I don't remember where it goes. But anyways, this one and this one, I have meeting up in the middle on a T down there. And then that T is going to come all the way over here because this is where the air filter for the turbo is going to be. So that way it'll have a vacuum instead of being boosted because that's how the stock one of these are supposed to set up like when you're running without boost or anything so i'm just assuming it's the same but yeah after that we just have to finish up a few little things and then hopefully it's going to start yep